This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I've seen The X from Outer Space, a Japanese science fiction monster attack movie from 1967 directed by Kazui Nihon Matsu. It follows a crew dispatched towards the planet Mars to investigate the disappearances of other spacecrafts within the area, because that's how space works. Anyways, they end up encountering a UFO which forces them to turn back, spraying them with strange spores as well. Taking one such spore back to Earth for study, they are surprised to find that it is not simply a fungus, but a biological entity that grows immensely in size, into a monster known as, uh, Gilala. Funny naming aside, the monster wreaks a path of destruction and havoc across Tokyo, as all monsters are instinctively meant to do, and it's up to the government space program to stop him before it's, uh, well, it does kind of destroy everything, so things are kind of already too late. Anyways, there's also some character development scenes, but they don't really matter too much in the long run. It's kind of ironic in a sense, as this is the kind of movie where the absence of that sort of development would be welcome, leaving more time to the monster attacks. However, now we have to sit through a bunch of scenes that set up a love triangle that doesn't matter all that much at the end of the film, as well as some other scenes that do help to build up this world. The most striking of these being the moon base, which manages to combine science fiction technology with 1960s interior decorating. It would have been nice to see more of that maybe, but even so it's just a distraction from the main event that being Gilala and his reign of terror. These scenes, which do involve him, manage to hit the kaiju itch, but they also tend to lean more into the cheaper side, almost like a parody of those movies, rather than something trying to match the more famous films, or even surpass them. I suppose that's why they gave the human characters more to do than sit around and panic, trying to make the movie out as something a bit more than a cheaper, simpler monster movie made to cash in on the craze. Unfortunately, it didn't work out in the long run, but it's nice to think that they tried. Anyways, the actual production of The X from Outer Space does at least play nice and loose with its inspiration. Or at least it doesn't try so hard to be something different that it completely misses the point. The monster attack scenes are nice and exciting, even if the actual miniatures being destroyed aren't as detailed as they could have been. Still, the movie does have some good use of cinematography and framing to try and make it all nice and believable, or at least visually interesting. The rest of the film also has a pretty good sense of scale about it, generally when it comes to cutting between Gilala's destruction and the people on the ground. There are even some special effects composites that have generally mixed results, but at least show the effort the filmmakers put into the spectacle. The models and miniatures of the space vehicles and settings are also pretty neat, and again, managed to hit that cross between futuristic and contemporary. Overall, the movie doesn't quite have the polish or pizzazz that its more popular cousins would have had, but it's still very much a fun ride that starts a bit slow, but hits a steady stride soon enough, and knows not to let down once it gets going. The X from Outer Space, Kazui Nihonwatsu, 1967. Three stars. I'd say that it's worth giving a watch for sure. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. 
subscribe to the channel for more reviews. Personally, I think I know what to do the next time I get bored around here. Yes, it involves stacking things up and kicking them over while screaming and roaring. <laughs>